Okay, we are ready for another episode of Pollinating the Planet with Love. I have an incredible guest with me today, Hawk Koch, and we are ready to go, I think. Are you ready to go in and pollinate the planet with love? Uh, I've been pollinating the planet with love for a long time, <laughs> so let's get okay, one going. Okay, let's go. Welcome to part one of my interview with Hawk Koch, a Hollywood producer launching his first book about his life in Hollywood. Living up to his famous father's footsteps, Howard W. Koch Sr., were big shoes to fill. Some may think it would make life easier getting breaks in the industry. However, the weight of carrying his father's legacy created difficulties that took him years to break through to come into his own identity. He shares raw and real stories that will give you an inside scoop to his life and a behind scenes of Hollywood. Don't miss out on all the show segments and hear more incredible stories of my guests on future episodes when you like and subscribe to my YouTube channel and Facebook page, Beth Bell Live. Welcome everyone to another edition of the Pollinating the Planet with Love show. I'm your host, Beth Bell, and I have a very special guest with me here today. Hawk Koch is a veteran movie producer, the former president of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, and former president of the Producers Guild of America with Mark Gordon. Hawk is on the board of directors of AMC Entertainment, cast and crew, the Motion Picture and Television Fund, the National Film Preservation Foundation, amongst many others. Starting as a production assistant in 1965 and working his way all the way to the top, Hawk has been intimately involved with the making of over 60 major motion pictures, among them such classics as Marathon Man, Chinatown, Wayne's World, Peggy Sue Got Married, Heaven Can Wait, and The Way We Were, and Rosemary's Baby. A native Angelino, Koch lives in Ojai, California with his lovely wife, Molly, near his three adult children and five grandsons. Thank you for being on the show and welcome. Thanks, but you missed our two rescue dogs and our two rescue horses. They're here yes, too. and I just got to meet them and they're yeah. beautiful. Yes, very good energy and and beautiful views and just an incredible place. So we're going to get through the journey as fast as we can because there's a lot of good juicy stuff. I did read your book. I was Thank blessed you. to have two ladies that helped me as they read it out loud as I was on the road. And it's called? Magic Time. My Life in Hollywood. Oh, well, Magic Time. Well, how right. did I think Magic Time? Well, ma why is it called Magic Time? Well, no, I was just thinking Magic Time. Oh, it's that's like, just, that's just yeah. like what, what stuck with that's me. Good. That's and good. And I want to yeah. talk all about that. Okay. But before we do, mm -hmm. I always like to ask the question, what did you think you were going to be when you grew up? But for you, I feel like it's kind of obvious. So I also want to ask it a little bit different to say, is there, is there anything that you didn't do that you thought you were going to do when you grew up? Ah, good question. Um, I thought I'd be more involved with politics. Oh. Yeah. Why? Uh, because I uh, worked really hard for, when I was a little kid, for Adlai Stevenson in the 1956 okay. election, and then really worked for JFK down at the L.A. Convention Center for the 1960 convention, and I was one of those young Kennedy, you yeah. know, love Kennedy. And uh, I was going to do whatever Kennedy said. And when he was killed, uh, as you read the book, yes. I left college and I left the United States. Yeah. And so, and then a few years later, I happened to be at the Ambassador Hotel for Bobby Kennedy when Bobby was assassinated. And that kind of stopped me from any political stuff. I yeah. just, uh, yeah. Interesting. Do you have any premonition what you might have been able to do? Was there something specific that you were really kind of holding a torch for? Uh, no, just to, for the right things to do. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of wrong stuff going on right now. Yeah. And so uh, I, I wished uh, that I, you know, I, I worked hard for, for Obama in 08 and was able to get a million phone calls in the Los Angeles area during the election. Oh, wow. And uh, so I, I felt like, you know, I like making a difference. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Speaking of difference, um, I, I think your story is very touching. It's, uh, it's very interesting in that you were born into a family that's, that's very well known and you had to follow in your father's footsteps, which sounds like in some respects was an incredible thing and in other respects it was a really difficult thing. Yeah. So I felt very honored to be able to get in a little bit of an insider view in your book 
to understand like how that really impacted you because I think a lot of people probably wouldn't know the details behind someone how someone feels and they kind of see it from a different perspective so you're young you're you're in London you're you're coming back to the United States at some point and you do get into the Hollywood scene I mean you you you've never really been out of the Hollywood scene right um, at what point did you start to feel like you had some autonomy for who you really were? Ah, took a long, long time. Yes. Uh, I don't suggest for anybody out there to name their son or their daughter after their s them. Yes. I think that's a very, very difficult thing to do. And I think that uh, uh, to go into the same business career, whatever, as your father or your mother, I think is also difficult. Yeah. But I grew up on a movie set, yeah. so there wasn't really, I mean, that's what I knew, and I had the, you know, whatever the genes are, I had the organizing gene yeah. <laughs> and yeah. the leadership gene, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I kind of loved that, and, you know, it's, it's always interesting to do what you know, you know, a lot of people are insecure, a lot of people are, ha don't have courage, they're afraid of everything yeah. in their lives, yeah. and so if you know how to bake a pie, maybe you're going to become a, a baker, yeah, right? Yeah. And if you know how to, if, if whatever it is that your family did, a lot of people go into their family business because they know it and there's yeah. a confidence there. And I grew up just being on a movie set, working with every single kind of, whether it was the grips or the props or electric or camera or sound or, yeah. or, cine or uh, costumes. Yeah. So I, I knew what each one of those people did. So it was, you know, uh, as, I, as I said, you know, when I left university, I moved to England and I was a roadie for a group called the Dave Clark Five who were as big as the Beatles in 1964. Yeah. And we did 48 cities in 52 days. We didn't get to North Dakota, but we got to a lot of places. <laughs> yeah. And um, uh, you probably I, wouldn't have had a very big crowd there well, anyway. So. We were in, we were in uh, somewhere in South Dakota, maybe yeah. Sioux Falls. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but uh, Elkhart, Indiana. I mean, we went to small yeah. places and we went to okay. big places. Yeah. But when I came back, and I really knew, I really loved the business. I yeah. loved seeing movies. They were magical for me, yeah. and being on a movie set was magical for me because I, I grew up on them, and the yeah. people who make movies, it's not yeah. just the director and the actors. Yeah. It's, there's a whole crew that is congealed, if that's the right word, into a family, and you make a movie, and you're with each other from 6 in the morning till 7 or 8 o'clock yeah. at night, and it's a family, and that's what I loved it. So, yeah. But the only problem was... Uh, when I met people, I was Howard Koch Jr. Right. And so when I met someone, they'd go, oh, you must be so proud. Your dad is such a wonderful yeah. man. Do you know what he did for me? And uh, Please say hi to him for me. Yeah. They didn't talk to me. They talked about my father. And how did that make you feel? Uh, <laughs> well, it was hard. <laughs> yeah. It was very hard. And, and no matter where or what I did, I moved up the ranks in our business. But even so, I'd meet somebody and yeah. that knew my dad and didn't know me, and they'd say, "Are you in the business?" After I'd done, you know, a lot of movies and been a top AD on, on some of the greatest movies ever, yeah. and I was very fortunate. Uh, and I remember one of the—I don't remember which movie it was—but you were working and you were in the restroom uh, yes, and yeah. overheard two gentlemen saying, "Well, yeah. he's only here because of his dad," and then the other guy said, "Well, actually, he's he's doing a pretty good job." Yeah, well, so. that when he when the guy said uh, the only reason that that Howard got the job was because of his father. Yeah, and I just felt terrible. Yeah, I'm sure your heart sank. Yeah, it was like I was working hard and I yeah. thought everybody, you know, thought I was doing a good job. And when the other guy said, "Yeah, but uh, you know, give him a break because he's yeah. he's doing a good job," I knew at that moment that I had to work harder than anybody else. Yeah to prove that I wasn't there because of my father, that I was there because of what I could do. Yeah. And I think that continued, I mean, every time I'd meet somebody, and it wasn't yeah. monthly, it wasn't weekly, it was daily. daily. I'm <laughs> sure, multiple times, probably yes. in a day sometimes. Yeah. Do you have any advice? Because knowing what you know now, I mean, you're... That's why I made Peggy Sue Got Married. <laughs> yeah, you're much wiser, and so you might have some pearls of wisdom for others that are in a similar situation that they've been named 
the same name and they're sort of struggling with this identity. Is there anything that comes to mind for advice to others or pearls of wisdom? Uh, well, I, I like I like live your dream. Mm -hmm. I like living your dream. Not what your parents want, not what your friends want, not what your partner wants, yeah. but really look deep inside you and say, what do I want to do? Yeah. And if you can find that answer and really look hard and deep, yeah. then go for it. Yeah. Then go for it. I, I say, show up. A lot of people, oh, I don't want to go to this party or I don't want to go to dinner with this yeah. person or do I have to go? Yeah. I always say, show up because, well, like you, you're starting out. You've got this great show. You've got a, an amazing thing you're trying to, to, mm -hmm. to get our planet to understand. Yeah. And a lot of people would say, well, it's not even, you know, it's just starting. Yeah. Why am I doing this? Well, I'm doing this because I feel like I have to show up for you because what, you're, what you are trying to, to do here for the yeah. planet is very worthwhile. And uh, who was it? I think it was... Uh, James Madison, one of our, I think, the fourth president of the United States, who said, if everybody was wonderful, we wouldn't need government. Oh, interesting. <laughs> you yes. know, so uh, yes. there's a couple of pearls. Yeah, and so, so I say, show up, live your dream, mm -hmm. because God forbid you, you're about to die, and yeah. you have like a minute to live, and you think to yourself, did I do what I wanted to do in my life? Yeah. Or yeah. did I do what I thought I should do? Yeah. And so regardless of what yeah. your name is, do what you want to do. Yeah. And, and it makes me think of Wayne Dyer's quote, don't die with the music inside. Yeah. Right? Yeah, good. And sometimes we do that. Yeah. Now, you talked about, um, or uh, you were talking about something that prompted me back to the, the time that you spent on set. And in the very beginning of the book, um, I was really glued to when you were a little boy and you were actually scared of your father, it sounded like, because you didn't have a lot of interaction. You were scared that you had to go on set with him without your mother. Will you take us back to that moment? Because it was so much fun. It was your well, first movie yeah. set. Well, yeah, I mean, I was, uh, my mother drove my sister and I up to mm -hmm. Durango, Colorado. I never saw my dad very often. He yeah. would, in those days, movies were six day, six day weeks and Sundays he was exhausted and mm -hmm. whatever. And uh, so we drove up there and we got there late in the afternoon and we stayed in these like little cabins. And the next morning, my father said, come on, he's coming yeah. to the set with me. And I used to be a shy little kid. Ah, I yeah. changed. <laughs> but I used to take my mother's dress and like put it around me so yeah. nobody could see me, yeah. right? Yeah. And that's what I did. And they said, no, no, you're going with your dad. Mm -hmm. And I got in the car and I was crying and all these men we're in the car with him. It was probably a station wagon or something, and we're driving. And finally, you know, there's nothing I can do. And he's a, my dad was six foot with a big barrel chest. And uh, all of a sudden, we're driving, and all of a sudden, I see smoke on the horizon. And then I see cowboys yeah. and Indians and horses and teepees. Yeah. And as a, as a four or five year old little kid, wow, what's it's this? Like a dream there were some trucks that, off yeah. to the side, and yeah. there was a catering truck, and, and we a had craft a craft table. Yeah, right, right, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. But it was unbelievable. And so I got out of the car, and instead of being hiding, I got, I, I was like, wow, what is all this? Yeah. And then some Native American put me on his knee. He really wasn't a Native American. His okay. name was Ricardo Montalban, <laughs> the famous actor. Yeah. And told me many moons ago, you know, he was doing his whole right, thing for a right. little kid. And you were in it. And then a, 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 somebody rode up on a horse and looked down and said, have you ever been on a horse before? No. Would you like to go for a ride? Of course. Are you kidding me? So I got up on the, somebody put me on the horse and he rode me around probably a minute. Yeah. You know, yeah. for me it was, it felt like, yeah, are you kidding? <laughs> it was fantastic. And he, you know, he was a big guy and he had his arm yeah. around me and had the reins the other side. And then the rest of the day, I spent with the son of the director. My dad was the assistant director. It was a movie called Across the Wide Missouri. When I got home that night, my father said to my mother, guess who gave Little Howie, that's who I yeah, was, yeah. Little Howie, his first horseback ride. Mm -hmm. And my mother said, who? And my father said, Clark Gable. Yeah. Well, I didn't know. Clark Gable yeah. could have been, you know, Joe Schmo. Right. But to, the, to my mother and to everybody else, Clark Gable. Oh, uh, a big so, deal, yes. Yeah, it was a big deal. Course. So yeah. that was... That was my introduction, and I never wanted to leave the set, and I don't think I've ever left it. Yeah, well, that's where I, I, I felt like you were talking about the magic, too, and, and that yeah. that's really in your blood, and yeah. and, yeah, you feel it. 
it's you know it's it's the Wizard of Oz. You know, I have to look behind the curtain. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I know what's going on behind the curtain, yeah. and it's really fun, and it's really interesting to focus on just what's in front of the camera mm-hmm. and leave all that other stuff behind until the director yells cut, and then you're back in yeah. behind the curtain. Yeah. But while you're filming, you really, if if you're doing it right, yeah. you're really focused on are we getting yeah. on camera exactly what right. needs to be gotten right. is the is the focus correct and do you i don't mean the focus of the camera i yeah. mean the is this particular scene pushing the story forward right, right. one pearl of wisdom that i will say yeah. a lot of people go to film school uh-huh. and i think that's great and you learn film sure. how to make film i would say for a lot of people take english because mm. No matter who you are, if you want to be in the film business, if you want to be a writer, a producer, a director, an actor, a, a, a film editor, you need to know how to tell a story. Yeah. And English is where you learn how to tell a story. Uh, the rest of the crafts you can learn, yeah. but learn how to tell a story. That's great advice. I like that. It also makes me wonder and think that knowing English, but also being able to talk about the story emotionally, right? Because some people are numb. Some people aren't really feeling their emotion. So that seems like a really important aspect of English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to understand it. I mean, yeah. and you can have all the action in the world. And today, every the franchises and mm-hmm. you know this guy beats up that guy and blows up this thing. That's great. And you know, I'm thrilled that a lot of people are going to the movie theaters. Yeah. But you also have movies that win Oscars. <laughs> yeah. Are generally emotional. Yeah. Like uh, last year's winner, you know. Uh, uh, you know. Yeah. So. Uh, well, I want to talk a little bit gr- about the similarities. Green Book. Sorry, oh, I just Green wanted Book. to say. Oh, yes, 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 yes okay. Right. Um, what is, do you think, similar between you and your dad? What do you actually carry on that you feel is, is your dad? Um, similar. Well, I think we both love movies. I think we, um, well, he he did it in a way, um, he did it differently than I do. I love the people, and he loved the people. He never forgot anybody's name. He'd walk on a set, whether it was the biggest star or whether it was the guy at the craft service table. He could say to the craft service guy, hey, Joe, How's your son? Right. How's your, how's your wife doing? Yeah. And he always knew their name. Yeah. And had always made everybody feel good. Yeah. And I've tried to emulate that. Not necessarily that I have the greatest memory of names, mm-hmm. but to to know that I'm just one of the guys. Yeah. There's no I, I don't like strata. Yeah. I don't okay. like class system. Yeah. I have a big question for you. We're okay. gonna go f- on a break, but the question is why do you think your dad didn't have that same level of attention with his son? But we're going to go to a break and we'll be right back. Okay. Blossom Bliss products are designed to help empower pure love and purpose in your life. It's through the power of words, flowers, and symbols that our products assist you in creating a blissful life. The power of words in our mini mantra word bar necklaces assist you in setting and blossoming your personal intentions. The affirmation cards leverage the power of flowers by providing daily inspiration. And the power of symbols in our life journey bracelets are great reminders of the things that bring us peace, joy, and love. Products are made and blessed in Bali with love by Balinese artisans who work with empowered hearts. When you purchase jewelry with a bee charm, we donate to save the bees. Join us in pollinating the planet with love. Go to our website, BlossomBlissBally.com. Again, that's BlossomBlissBally.com. Thanks for joining in to hear the life journey lessons and pearls of wisdom of me and my guests. Be sure to hear all three segments when you subscribe to my YouTube channel and receive reminders to upcoming shows and segments. The full episode is also available at bethbell.me show. If you found this inspiring, please give this episode a like and a big thumbs up. 
If you want to hear more, follow me or hit the bell for reminders at Beth Bell Live on Facebook and YouTube. I'd love to have you join the mission of pollinating the planet with love.